Hello, and today in the studio, we're going to be working on the colour charts that you can see behind me. Um, I've had loads of requests over the weeks um, about, Clive, how do you make them? What are they for? Etc, etc. So what I'm going to do is going to take you on that mission today and to show you how to produce one of those. If that's what you're interested in, please stay with me. And after this short introduction, you can join me in the studio. Nice. Yes, and thank you very much for joining me in the studio today. Now, what you're going to need in this particular lesson is a 15 by 12 canvas. That's one of those. Or you can use a bit of cardboard or a bit of masonette, a um, bit of hardboard, um, a painting panel, anything basically that is roughly about that size. So about 15 by 12. Now, don't forget, it is important that you pre-prime anything that you're actually going to put just... Uh, acrylic onto um, use a gesso primer that's important um, this is just an old canvas that I've been using for other tutorials um, like the sky on the on the sky and clouds that I did live yes this is one of those canvases I painted the sky on so I thought I in in my in my wildest wisdom that I would utilize this yes yeah, so I painted over the sky then let's talk about actually mic, um, marking this out correctly now Okay, so I'm just going to put my good glasses away just for one second. Now, as you can see below, we need some stuff. So one of the first things we need is some masking tape. And this masking tape is a two inch. So that's always handy to get hold of anyway. So we need some masking tape. And as you can see, I got a steel rule as well. Uh, a pencil for marking out and a sharp craft knife. Please be careful with these because they can cut you quite badly um, and a cutting mat which is important. Now let's get our canvas there. Now we're going to need to put a border around the canvas which is about a quarter of an inch. Now what I suggest you do is get a, about a roughly about a quarter of an inch. Use this finger against the side of the canvas and then just draw down like that with a pencil. So you need to do that all the way around um, roughly about a quarter of an inch. This is no set and hard and fast rules about this. And that just gives you a nice neat little border around. Now, looking at our boards um, on the wall, as you can see, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 squares going that way. And I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 squares going that way and obviously a border on the top as well so looking at our canvas looking at our canvas if we measure across if we've allowed a right right amount of gap it should be 15 inches from there that line to that line so we'll just mark out one two three four five six seven 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, we can give ourselves 15. So we've actually gained a little bit more on this particular one. So they're an inch. The lines are one inch apart. So what you need to do is mark little dots like that there and then mark the same dots approximately there. You want to, on the bottom of the canvas and then you want to join those lines up like that and you continue doing that all the way down the canvas which is our vertical lines as, as we look at the um, 
as we look at uh, the canvas okay now once we've gone once we've done all those lines down like that what we need to do now is turn the canvas around onto the side and again come down there oh and we got 15 again so no we haven't we need to go this way five you're thinking too much no sorry we need to go across this way so what do we say we had 10 we've got yeah i think we got 10 there so we need to go one two three four five six seven eight nine 10 line 10 squares so then again these are one inch apart and then you go down the bottom of the canvas and you go one two three four etc and then you need to draw your lines horizontally as we look at the canvas so we need to go down that way now for the ease of videoing um, I'm going to put that down and this is one I marked out earlier there you go so we've done all the lines going that way and now we just got to finish these lines going this way so we're just gonna finish putting these lines in place don't put too much pressure on the pencil you just want a line that's the most important thing it's only a guide at the end of the day and there we have our grid so these are going to be our squares that we need um, to put our colors in as you can see on the charts on the wall so what do we do now we're going to need our masking tape so let's get it let's pull a little bit of masking tape off about go to the, the, the width of your board or canvas and put that down like that let's just put the canvas down onto the floor i'm just gonna have a little drink as my throat is quite dry today and let's cut that in half approximately so this is an inch wide we know that so let's just cut that in half be very careful with the knife please okay now we pick that up just stick that on the side for now and pick that one up stick that one on the side for now so now we get our canvas or our panel back onto the board onto our cutting mat and we get make sure you've got the straight edge and not the piece you've just cut and then you put that nicely down like that and just fold that over rub that down really well and just tuck that around and then again same on the other side and in exactly the same way we need to do this side so pre-cut your masking tape put that down there and cut that in half bring in your board back up and then we can go down this side only approximately uh, if, if your if your OCD is as bad as mine we tend to do a little bit I tend to be a little bit of a perfectionist but I and I I try not to be especially when I'm painting I um what I try and do is try and be as relaxed as I possibly can and that's why sometimes I just paint the way I feel and not always to perfection okay so we we've put that in place we need to rub that down make sure there's nice and tight around there because we don't want any bleed some of the um charts you can have the paint will actually go underneath there now what we're going to do at this stage is pull out a bit of masking tape about the same width again put that down onto your board put this onto the floor get your rule and 
approximately approximately a quarter inch strip as you can see that is approximately a quarter is one and we pull another one off and then we'll pull another one now you progressively do this until you've got enough or you can just do one strip at a time oops see I nearly slipped on onto my hand then so you've got to be careful doing this enough there for another two I think yeah I'll just take a little bit off that edge there so if you go one a little bit thicker than the others just just take a little bit off like that there you go and what do you need to do with these is pick up each piece just stick it down on the side of your using the corner of the knife just stick it onto your workbench like that I suggest you just do uh, one strip at a time otherwise you can get these can get a bit tangled up on you and you'd be wasting time actually cutting them make sure you leave enough gap between so they don't stick together you and my throat is a bit sore today <clears throat> I've had a bit of a chest infection over the last week but the show must go on as they say yes okay so what we need to do now is pick up each one of these you put it on the line that we've just drawn in the center and just smooth that down and tuck that over and you continue to do that all the way down on the vertical oops you keep them as straight as you can on the vertical strips and what we're going to do see it does get tangled here we are what we're going to do then we're going to do repeat that process in exactly the same way for the horizontal ones so once we've completed all the verticals we then go and cut the strips in exactly the same way and then we lay those strips this way over those until you end up with a grid that's similar to that so you should be able to see that I've got a grid pattern now I've got tape going that way and I've got tape going that way and these are all little individual little squares that um, we need to put our color chart on um, as you can see this is an old one and I have been working on before but I thought well just to speed the process up I thought I'd show you this one so what you also need to do is um, put a, a an area there you can use the first top squares um, you can mask that off like that and then when you remove the tape that's all going to be clear and that's going to give you enough room to actually write in what it is um, there's your descriptions up there on on the top one as you can see I've got a standard chart uh, it's a red um, primary yellow primary blue and orange which is red and yellow mixed together and then I mix um, a yellow and blue to give me a green and then the blue and red to give me the violet and then I've added red and green to see what that gives me and then yellow and, and, and violet to see what that gives me and a blue and an orange to see what that gives me yellow and orange etc 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 I'll go through that in just a second but the bar there is what we've just placed here to put our name on okay so without further ado let's get some paint on the palette and start putting some colors on the actual thing itself yes our color chart i just removed that because i've already done the opposite side but don't worry right i'm just gonna put some colors on my palette and then we will start playing with some colors and i'll show you how to actually assemble this color chart which is pretty good yes and they're quite useful in the studio so let's get and do, get and do that now Clive let's get and do that yes okay so we've got our board and it's all been gridded out and now the most important thing in this particular um, stage is we need to get some gesso and why do I do this well the simple reason is that what's going to happen is we're going to get bleed through if we've just put paint straight onto that now the the paint is actually going to bleed underneath 
the, um, the masking tape. So what we need to do is go all over our board with gesso and get that gesso. Don't put it on overly thick, and I mean, don't put it on too thick, but you need a nice smooth coat in. And make sure you get that all over and around that tape because you don't want that to actually bleed through. Now you do that twice at least and not only that it's going to help you to actually um, put the paint on as well and when you remove the tape you're going to have nice sharp edges around your boxes. And that's the key yes. So do that all over twice I'm not going to do that um, and then once you've done that then we'll actually have a look at the colours so I'm just going to dry that very quickly with a hairdryer okay now that's done we need to have a look at our paints I'm just going to go for my my primary red which is a cadmium red hue and I'm putting some um, medium cadmium medium yellow hue out and just put that safe and I've also got some processed cyan so these are my primary colors that we're going to be looking at for the first few and um, I'm going to put a little bit of um, titanium white and you put some gesso out then Clive you don't want to do that and put some titanium white out as well now select yourself a nice brush um, it doesn't really have to be anything special um, I'm using one of these little short flats there. I'm just going to go into a little bit of moisture, as you know, with the medium mix formula that I got. Getting a bit of kitchen roll. And I'm just going to pick up raw cadmium red straight onto my brush. And I'm going to go into the first square. And I'm just going to place that on there. Now what I suggest you do is use the hairdryer on this after each coat because what you want to do is get a true color now if you've just put one coat on there and you leave it it's going to look quite quite thin you know you can see you can going to see the red coming or the white coming through it so every time you do that put air dryer on it dry it off and then reapply now I know I normally say wait for the canvas to cool but in this instance it doesn't really matter because we're not doing a painting we're just doing a color chart and if that dries a bit quicker then that's even great that's greater 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 Clive greater Clive Clive yes okay so pull in some of that red down like that get in some titanium white add in that titanium white into our red and trying to make a scale by adding that white onto the palette that you can work to so we leave it there wash your brush so this is the red with just a little bit of white in it so it's just going out a little bit pink so let's put that in there now you need a definite change between that one and that one because we haven't got enough boxes on you but if you wanted a, 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 um, a value between that one and that one, when you look at the chart, just add a little bit more red than you need to mix this colour. If that makes any sense. Now normally I would dry each box and then recoat, but in this instance I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do this because of speed. And wash your brush every time, every time you go to change your colour, make sure you wash your brush. So pick up the lighter bit now again, so we're going down another value, 
check in it is lighter so rather than try and play around with mixing colors on the actual board itself you're doing it on the palette which makes life a little bit easier and don't forget it's important that you and my, my chair is squeaking today quite badly it's important that you second coat these so every time you've done a, 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 a layer dry it reapply I'm not doing it because of speed so I'm going down again into another value picking up enough paint on my brush and as you can see there's a definite difference between those two now if you've done that and you think oh, I, I, I want it a little bit darker just pick up a little bit of red or whatever color you want and just add a little bit back into that before you reapply it just to get that change that you want so it's not a hard and fast rule you're just looking for a, a nice color which is going to give you a guide these are guides these at the end of the day these are just guides so again wash your brush dry that coat second apply it go down then and you are going into a lighter value once more and then we put in that one now I suggest you do go a little bit lighter on this box because we're running out of boxes shortly and we need a definite difference let me just darken that up just a touch there this is really going to give you good practice for color mixing it really is dry it off of the hair dryer second coat it wash your brush go into another value let's add a little bit more white now to that picking up enough paint on your brush and then we're going down into a nice light value there like that now this is exactly the same way you can make your grayscale sticks you can make green scale sticks or whatever color sticks you want you can make these out of strips of wood if you wanted to out of strips of masonette like you've seen on the side of my board and um, it's a very handy tool to actually have in the studio is a, a color chart or a color stick or a value stick and we're gone lightened again the reason I did these is because um, obviously I wanted something on the walls in the studio and I wanted something to represent what I'm doing and I thought to myself, oh, it would be a nice idea if I did some colour charts. And um, I've had so many people, I'm whitening with white again, just bringing in a little bit of hue into that. I've had so many people saying, wow, Clive, you can hardly see that now, look. Wow, Clive, um, you know, I like those colour charts, how do I make them? Um, just bring a little bit more colour into that. How do I make them? Oh, well, I'm showing you today, yes. And you could just continue doing that. I, I actually, leave those two boxes there. Don't bother about the bottom two boxes. I've got a plan for those. So that would be your last entry level there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you've got eight scales. Don't worry about these two boxes. We'll come to them in just one second. Because what I was thinking of doing there is what I've done on the other charts. I got this one I'll mix black with to give a tone. And the other one, I'm going to mix this complement to it. So mark those two because I have been known to um, make a mistake doing this. And let's get a little bit of mild black out onto the the canvas. I got some here somewhere. Where did we put it, Clive? I don't know. Where did you put it? I don't know. What did I do with that? Okay. This is ivory black. It doesn't make no difference at all for this. Put a little bit of black out. I got it here somewhere. I got a brush in my mouth. That's why I'm talking a bit weird. Okay, so back into our neat red. Let's put a little bit of neat red by there because there's a reason I'm doing that. Now back into our neat red. Get a little bit of black and add a little bit of black to that. You want to see a nice difference on this. And then we put that one in the black box.
And you can see on this one what I meant when I said you can actually see the white coming through. So on this occasion, I will put the air dryer on that. I don't know why my chair is creaking today, it's terrible. Okay, so we put that back on. As you can see, it made, it's made a great difference. Now the other thing um, with colour mixing is if you mix um, a complement of whatever colour you've got, and in this case it's red, so the, um, the complement of red is green. Let's put a little bit of green over there. And what that does, it actually kills the, the brightness or the chroma or the saturation. And dechromizes it, takes that colour away, um, takes the redness away from it then, um, as far as red is concerned. Um, so we've mix a little bit of green now with the red. That's why I put the red there. You can see... Then it's gone quite a, a dirty red. Okay, I'm going to dry that off quickly. So to add a colour's complement or a colour that's directly opposite it on the colour wheel, if you have a look at the colour wheel, you'll see directly opposite red is green. So that is going to dechromarize that and that's going to dechromarize that. And it's the same with an orange is blue. Um, the yellow is violet, etc, etc. Now, if, if you've watched my color mixing theory lessons, you'll understand exactly what I mean by that. So let's put that and you can see it's gone quite a dirty looking red. Washing your brush really well. And again, the same with the yellow. Let's pull a bit of yellow down. Down like that. Bringing a bit of white into it. Bringing the white up. There you go. Put a bit more white in there. Clean our brush, going straight in to some neat yellow, and then putting our, our neat yellow in, like that. Drying that off with a hairdryer, and then I suggest you wash your brush, go back in, second coat, go back into your yellow, there's a bit more white. Let's just get that definite difference. Yellow is quite a strong color when it's when you're mixing it with white, so because it's a dominant type of color. So bear that in mind. You should always mix a touch of yellow to white rather than white to the yellow. Otherwise, you'll use so much white to get the color you want. And um, dry that off with your hairdryer. Second, coat it, and again, add in a bit more white. To that yellow and so on and so on and as you in between each box don't forget to dry and then reapply and leaving the bottom two boxes again I'm washing the brush really well. I'll be running out of the kitchen roll here now in a minute time. So the complement of yellow, as we discussed just now, is violet. So that is a red. Let's get a little bit of red. And as I said, we can play around with mixing. And a little bit of blue. Let's mix a bit of blue with that. And you can see that's turned into quite a dark purple. Now, if you want to mix a little bit of white with that, just to get the undertone color. There you can see it is definitely a purple. 
The violet is it, it tends to be a little bit more onto the red side but you can go blue violet as well if you wanted to I like a nice pinky type of purple personally or violet let's add a little bit of white to that you can see it that's the undertone color so that'll be fine to mix that with a little bit of yellow And as you can see, it's made that yellow look really dirty, dechromorized it, taking that color, that brightness of yellow away. There you go. That's what I wanted. And let's put that, um, that's the complement, which is the bottom box. Don't get these confused. You can get these confused. I just nearly did a mis big mistake there. So your complement is there. And then We got a little bit of yellow. Let's get a little bit of yellow. Come on, a little bit of yellow. Oh, we can bugger that out, please. Right, let's get a bit of yellow. There you go. Let's add. Let's wash that. Make sure that's out. Pick up a little bit of black. Mix that with the yellow to give us our shade. You can see it's gone a little bit green because if you're using a Mars black, it's got blue in it. So a Mars black and yellow, because there's blue in there, it's going to go a little bit green. And then you just dry that off. Contaminated brush. That's what they say. Yes. Yeah, that's better. That's what happens when you use your head dry. This, so you can see the way that's darker there and lighter there. Now that, but when I say you can lift paint off a canvas, it's exactly what's happened there because I went over it very lightly with a hair dryer. I might have just dried the surface of the the paint, but I didn't actually dry the underlining layer part of it. So it was it was still a little bit wet underneath the actual surface. So when you put more um, moisture on top of that with a, with another coat, it tends to reactivate and lift it. And that's exactly what happened there. So that's a good example of what not to do as far as that is concerned. But yes, so we continue doing that now um, with the blue. I'll do that blue before we move on to the next stage and um, in exactly the same way so just to save some video time I'll just go ahead and do that and I'll switch the cameras off and there you are so I've, I've managed to do the blue excuse my my squeaky chair I don't know what I have to get some oil on it I think um, but as you can see um, exactly the same way with the process blue and you've got some lovely colors there and you can get some really nice pastel colors and adding black to blue will give you a, a, a Prussian blue effect and obviously the complement is made it with it, which is orange uh, which is made it that dirty dirty color and um, it's 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 a fantastic way you now so once you've done that and we'll talk about um, actually what you can do um, throughout the rest of this and um, once it's all dry and you're all happy and then you can start removing the actual tape like that and you take these bits of tape off There you go and what you're eventually going to end up with is a, is a lovely grid pattern and um, let's take a piece of this that's it let's take them off there like that you can see anyway you can see what I mean you take that off like that and you're going to end up with a lovely grid pattern you can see um, the pencil marks that I've left on this particular one 
and what you can do is you can because I did this slightly differently this one you can remove those quite easily um, with an eraser like that and you're going to leave your boxes in place now if you have a look at the wall the chart i've done on the wall what we've actually done here is um because we we put just a very thin line on there because the one i just showed you um are double lines um and that was a mistake on my part but if you as long as you put a very thin line when you're marking these out you're not going to have that problem um so we did the red the yellow and the blue so we go with that's our primary colors we going into our secondary colours then by mixing red and yellow together we get an orange and yellow and blue to get our green and blue and red to get a violet and then we can lighten them with white and add black to them to see what that would do add a complement to see what that would do go into our, our, our tetri colours then and we could do those and or we can just play around with all these different colour uh, combinations if we have a look at this chart here, we'll go into red violets, red oranges, red and blue and yellow and orange violet and green and yellow ochre. What happens if we thin down or, or, or change the value of a yellow ochre? What happens if we add uh, a black to it? What happens if we add its complement to it? Um, again, yellow ochre. Work out the complement on your colour chart and then uh, yellow ochre and red. What happens if we add a red to the yellow ochre? What's that going to give us? What happens we add a blue to the yellow ochre? What's that going to give us? A yellow to the yellow ochre, and et cetera, et cetera. And you can play around. You can play around with these color charts. Again, even looking at this one here, you know, I've got a raw sienna. I, I picked up a flesh tint. How, how thin can I get that? You know, not thin, but how can I change its value? Because some lovely, lovely skin tones there, just on that little section there. And, 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 and the world's your oyster, really. The world is your oyster. If you just put a block of colour down, as if you see me doing this the sky tutorial live, that's just a um, just a raw cerulean blue, and I've just added a little bit of white to it to see what that's going to give me. If it's an undertone to it, it's got a bit of a, a greeny tinge to it, as you can see, and the Prussian blue looks more of a grey because it's got a lot of black in it. So you can play around with all these different colour formulas, and you know the way you actually put them on and you can put those up on your wall and they would make a fantastic fantastic backdrop for you yeah so that's a, a good way of actually um d you know decorating your wall and giving yourself um some color charts to work to but what i do suggest is this um what well, this is what i do i go out i've gone out and bought a book and um, why have i done that um because you got all these color charts there You've got a choice of all these different things. There's so much detail in there. There's a lot of information in there. And all these charts are made for you. Um, they give you a recipe. Um, we've got um, this this particular pink that I'm looking at now, which is a landscape colour. Um, you've got three parts of white, four parts of cardinum orange, one part of risen crimson, and two parts of cardinum red light. Now we'll be going into parts again. Part is just exactly what it says. It is a part. So it could be a teaspoonful is one part, or a little dot, a dot is another part. But there are charts out there that we can use. And I'll, and I'll put, what I'll do, I'll put a, a, a chart together, a grid together for you. And I'll give you an idea of what a part is. Once you know what a part is, it's a part. So when, it, when I was doing my, uh, my recipe for gesso, I'd say one cup is one part so one cup of um, calcium carbonate to one part of or four parts of water so you get the idea a part is just what you decide a part is so don't make it complicated and um and, and, and that's that's it yes it is and uh, all it remains me to say is thank you very much for joining me in the studio today i hope that's been of use um it's it was quite um, um, a miggledy piggledy type of lesson but that's the way you're going to be able to do color charts to decorate your room the color charts for reference and not only that it gives you a lot of practice for color mixing as well so if that's been of use please leave me a comment in the comment box below um, please pop along to patreon it's a public funded site um, that's where um, people will decide to actually help me uh, become a patron 
for as little as a dollar a month that's 25 cents a week yes yeah. so um that's gonna help me in the studio give me a little bit more free time in order to do lessons like this because these lessons are quite uh quite difficult to to get around because these are full tutorial lessons as you can see i have about three or four different canvases there which are all at the plan and everything. that's not your problem but yes if you would like to um pop along there i would be grateful i'm just gonna have a little we'll sip of tea because my, my throat is drying out. If there's anything you want, please let me know. If there's anything you want me to cover, please let me know. I am not going into pastels and pencil drawings uh, currently because my time is taken up so much with the, um, uh, the, the painting. And um, yes, but I will be looking into maybe doing a couple of them next year which is 2016, I believe. So have a good day, a good week, a good month, a good year, because I don't know when I'm, you're going to be seeing this because time's relative on YouTube. And I'll catch you on the next one. Nice.